You know, so obviously there's no way I can't touch on the presidential election. I know some of you don't want to hear this. This isn't I told you so. I've never really told you where I voted or where I was going to vote. I only tried to educate you from using the AISideWith.com. But there's a few things that's happened since the vote that I just can't sit back and not say anything about. Because there was tons of misinformation leading up to the vote on both sides, I'll add. But there's been a lot of racial things after the vote. So the losing side has dropped the world's biggest race card on the results of this election. Race and identity politics are never going to win an election. Because basically you're telling the American people that we're all stupid if we don't do this and we don't do that. Or we're all racists. And by doing so after the fact, I believe that they're setting our country back even further, claiming that the results are all about race. No one likes black women. That's BS. It's not the black women. People are tired of it. And so you take somebody, well, I can, I can tell you this. Fundamentally, the harris Walls campaign failed. They failed in their strategy from day one. They never talked to the people. Unfortunately for Kamala Harris, she doesn't have a good record. You can't go from being the least like vice president ranked in history to being the number one candidate for presidency. It just doesn't work that way. And the people, that, here's the problem. The American people aren't stupid. We won't even talk about Tim Walz right now. It has nothing to do with him. Every single time they brought out a musician, every single time an actor, a millionaire, a billionaire came out and said, you need to vote for Kamala Harris, that was one step closer to defeat. Every time they shamed people, well, if you don't vote for this person, you're not black enough. Or black men, why aren't you voting for this lady? Black women, you have to stand up. Black power, why are you voting for this person? I'm voting for them because they're black. I'm voting for them because they're a woman. It's a great idea, but it doesn't do anything this is the real world. You have to vote for people for their views, their economic plan. How are they going to move the country forward? What would they change about the past, especially if they were responsible for where we're at today? And their failure to go back and say, well, maybe we shouldn't have done it that way. It'll be different moving forward. And here's how. There's tons of strategic reasons why the Democrats did not win this presidential election. And just for the record, I am a moderate left-leaning voter, but I'm also independent. So you sit back and look at the whole thing. But as far as The View and Sonny Hostin and that shit show, which by the way, I'm glad my wife no longer watches that garbage, for Sonny to get up there and say it's all about race because that's all she does. She's one of the biggest race baiting people on television right across the aisle from Whoopi. But let's break down some statistics here because the American people deserve to know the truth because Sonny will have you believe and The View will have you believe, most of them, that... Kamala Harris didn't win because she's a woman. Kamala Harris didn't win because she's black. Kamala Harris didn't win because she's a black woman. A black woman can lead this country. A woman can lead this country, just not Kamala. But let's look at the numbers of the population that makes up this country because they were really quick. They, as in The View, as in Sunny, were really quick to throw up a graphic that said, look, this percentage of white men and white women were voted Trump in. And because of that, we are never going to have a minority president because the white people won't allow it. So let's take a look at this number. As of July of 2023, 335 million people in the United States, and this was a year ago, so you can give or take that by quite a few given the legal and undocumented people living in this country a year later, a year and a half later. Of these 335 million people, 75.3% of them are white alone. The next closest, Hispanics or Latino, 19.5%. So given the basic math numbers, you're always gonna have way more white people in this country and white voters than you're gonna have any other race. There will always be more white people voting, period, point blank, regardless of which way they vote. African-American, 13.7%. Asian alone, 6%. And it goes down from there. Two or more races, 3%. American Indian or Native American, 1.3%, uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, you're always gonna have more white people voting for any given candidate. But the real number that no one's really talking about on the left or the people that are upset because we have all these racists. And by the way, Morning Joe and Al Sharpton said that the Latino voters are now the new white supremacists. They're the new racists. They're the new misogynists. But did you know that more Latino women, Latino males, Asian Americans, Indian Americans, every other multi-race voted more for Donald Trump for Republicans than any other time in history? That's a fact. Look it up. So yeah, more people may have voted in those minorities. Latina women 
more of them voted for Kamala Harris, but overall the Latino vote, more of them voted for Trump by percentage than any other candidate in history. Same thing with any other race. That should tell you the fundamental issues with this year's election. It's not voter fraud. And was 2020 stolen? Probably. 20 million votes just all of a sudden disappeared because Biden got 81 million votes in 2020. No other president's got more than 70. I think 66, 67, 69 million was the most. Trump would have won. I think he got 74. But that was four years ago. It is what it is. But the reason why Kamala Harris and that campaign lost is because they did not meet the American people where they're at. So every time you saw Megan Thee Stallion or Oprah Winfrey telling you that you need to vote for Kamala Harris, you had this fire chief, this union worker, this woman who was personally affected by the policies that had happened over the last three years, telling America why you should vote for Donald Trump. Was the economy better four years ago? Maybe. Maybe it was all a shell game. But you have to hit people where it matters the most, in their hearts and in their minds. And the Harris campaign continuously failed and didn't do the interviews. Maybe weren't allowed to do the interviews. Social media, podcasts, that's where all the news is when the mainstream media is lying to you 90% of the time. They're doing what they're told to do. We'll put it that way. And I'm I'm not a MAGA extremist, but I love his team. Vivek, Tulsi Gabbard, I think RFK wants to make America healthy again. Nobody on the other side of the aisle was talking about any of this stuff. Nobody on the Democratic side was going to college campuses holding open debates with students and convincing them why they are wrong on their misconceptions, why the lies they've been told are, long, are wrong. Nobody was doing that. They should have done that. I'm sure they could have poked holes in a lot of things on the Trump side of the, on the ticket, but they didn't. They forgot about the average working everyday American, and that's how you lose an election. But that's what they'll have you believe. So we'll just have to see what the next four years holds. The Hard Marking Podcast, a little bit of cars, so much more available anywhere you get your podcast or check it out at hardparkingpod.com.